this is our society. Right. And it will take me and you to mm. do it. That's why I always watch Johnny's Bite. <laughs> the general watches Johnny's Bite. Very, every day. Thank I you very much. And I is devoid of insults, mm -hmm. but straight to the point. Mm. Factual and fearless. What he seeks to do is to bring attention to some of the ills or some of the problems that we have mm. and um, even though it's often very spicy I was telling mm. him that he could add some ketchup on the side. Oh, you add some ketchup? It's too hot for <laughs> you, eh? Hot. I don't get surprised when people criticize you. But I think you are doing a good job. Thank you, sir. And don't at all think about what people will say. Continue with the objective work that you are doing. And definitely it will help this nation. Because you are not doing it for yourself. But you are, what Ghanaians cannot say is what you are saying. Hey, Charlie, no be joke. Oh, you know, the pressure joking. people like Johnny can give you. No, no. You know, get gray hair, you get gray hair. I'm innocent. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That the pressure Johnny and his people, <laughs> mm -hmm. the pressure they can give you, you know, get gray hair, you go get. So your best bet is not mm. to have hair. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasban Allah wa nima wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, and surely goodness and message shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever, amen. And salamu alaikum, welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's Thursday morning. This morning, I've been thinking about the reaction of many Ghanaians regarding our move to go to the IMF. The blame game is still going on. The denial and refusal to accept blame is still going on. And a few more tapes are still flying around. Well, we are in negotiation now. We are in a conversation now with the IMF. Yesterday, I understand that the IMF stuck to time and they came in. They called it a Kesti call on the vice president. And that, you know, that would usually kickstart what we're going into and the conversations thereof. I'm told that the president will lead the tax force and then the finance minister will lead the data sharing team. I wish them well. And I wish them well, not because we have nothing else to say, but I wish them well because it is Ghana. If the nation falls, it falls on all of us. If the nation succeeds, it succeeds on all of us. And that is why at some point when we talk, those in leadership must listen because power emanates from the people. One would have expected that the president of the republic at this time would have done a reshuffle to give the strongest indication yet to the people of the Republic of Ghana that he actually listens to the people. But no, the president has not done, and, and I have mentioned it, not just me, there are too many people, Dr. Injina Kwabne Japan was here a, a, a few weeks ago. He said, it's a novelty that for six years, a major reshuffle has not happened. He's not the only one, Dr. Nyahota Maklu. Name them, all the key stalwarts within the MPP. And even in the NDC, another CSOs are mentioning it. One would have thought that, look, with all the conversations going around, if the people are refusing to uh, resign or, or move away because it, it may affect their image, whatever it is, you have the power to appoint and disappoint. You would have sacked them. One would have thought that the president at this point would have sacked them, but no. The president has not decided to sack them. If he has decided, we don't know. When we don't want to hear about plans to sack and reshuffle or to change people from where they have sat for six years. We want to see the results. Because the general mood in the country is that most of those people have hit a certain saturation level. New ideas are not flowing in. And the young people within the party are, are desperate. That is the conversation. That's the first one. And so when people tell me that the president is a listening pre pre president, I say, well, is the president listening to the grounds? And people would quickly compare with President Kufour because that's also another MPP government. 
What would President Kufo have done in these times? We saw President Kufo, he took us to Hippic. And when he told us that times were difficult, we took out to Hippic and took us out of Hippic and all of that. So the conversation is that what would President Kufo have done? Because the same tradition, same leadership, same uh, peers, if you will, well, not exactly peers, but same, same, you know, generation of politicians. One would have thought that the president would have listened because if you keep the same set of people at the same place for six years, they become comfortable one, they become saturated two, fresh ideas will not flow in three, and they have the assurance that they can keep whatever they have to their benefit and that they would not, I mean, look at, look at the other sectors where faces were changed. Look at the things that are happening in those sectors. So why not the other sectors? What's happening, Mr. President? One would have thought that you'd have listened to calls for you to run a reshuffle. And there are so many brilliant, brilliant, brilliant guys and, and women within your party. Young, energetic, bold, enthusiastic, forward-looking. People who look like they can be at this. And I pray that when they are also given an opportunity, they would not be overly partisan. Yesterday, I had the privilege of reading the, the uh, autobiography of Dr. Hela Leman, Ghana's um, uh, president, one-time president. And I was wowed that just like President Kufo, just like President Rawlings, just like President Leman, he had also engaged the services of people other than his party members to form a government. So the question is, must it always be about all NDC and all MPP, winner takes all? We know it's a problem. One would have thought that the president at this time would have done the reshuffle too. One would have thought that the excesses, the excesses, and I'm talking about the excesses. People have been appointed to serve as advisors to people who actually may not require advisors. And when you listen to the advisors speak, you wonder if they have been giving the right kind of advice to the people they are supposed to be advising. And we pay them for that kind of advice. Well, it may be different from the kind of things they say on air and the kind of things they advise in public. But if you are comfortable enough to say some of those things in public, I wouldn't be surprised if you say worse in private. But we pay them. And that's the point. We pay them, we give them fuel, we give them art, we give them everything that they require to make their lives comfortable in order to deliver the public good. But is it worth that paycheck? That's the conversation. Is it worth that paycheck? Because that paycheck is generated from either loans that we have contracted, either grants that we have got, either taxes that we have collected from the market women, from the people roaming around, one would have thought that at this time, the wastage not beyond, beyond the 30, oh, we have cut 30% of this, we have cut 30% of, the people need to see that in your doings, 30% has really been cut. But no. Another thing that perhaps, if the president indeed was, was to be a listening president, would have been the reinstatement of the collection of road tolls. Because that was a bad move. We agreed that in 2021, the collection of road tolls at all the 38 polling points will be a revenue line for us, for our six. And we're told how we earn some 70 million in, in excess of that annually. We have run November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Eight months without tolls. Four months to go, and that would have been our 70 million right there. Today we are crying that E-Levy is not achieving what it's supposed to achieve. IMF is here, but we are being told that we will not cancel E-Levy. But we are told that we are imposing E-Levy on the people because we don't want to go to IMF. Fair point to make that IMF is here, but we don't have a program yet. And they are going to support a certain homegrown program. And I've asked when the homegrown programs were developed, because you are going to present as part of the itinerary that I have seen, 
the ministry is going to present a certain homegrown program to the IMF. Why are critical people within society not aware of this program and what it entails? So what are you presenting to the IMF on our behalf? I digress, but back to the conversation. One would have thought that the president, after that ill decision to cancel the road tolls, would have brought back the road tolls because the road tolls could have earned us money immediately in real time. So if the president were listening, president number one, he would have done a reshuffle, sack people, change people at different places to bring in fresh ideas, young blood, energetic. Because when you put a 70, 75-year-old man at, a po at post, he will go to office after two, three hours. He will go home and go and sleep. Or he will even sleep in the office. I'm not anti-age. But can you imagine the, the old man is a board chair and they don't have meetings every day. So they have time to relax, think, reflect, draw back on their past energies and experiences, and then come to a board meeting where a young man is CEO or deputy CEO, and they engage with them and guide them, say, you take this step, you take that step, or you take this step, it's wrong, you take that step, it's wrong. I thought that was what society was all about, and to create a certain transitional plan. But we don't have that. We have instead created an old people's brigade. So in a country, we tell the young people that the jobs are not there. And I pray that the IMF program will not come and tell us that put a freeze on employment. We have created a situation where we tell young people, people who have graduated in 2020, 2021, 2019, written their licensure, written, done their national service, done everything, fulfilled all the requirements. And we tell them there are no jobs. And we find old people who have served their country, gone past the 60-year mark, which is the official retirement age of the country, and we give them appointment, and we give them renewal of appointment, and we tell the young people that there are no jobs. What kind of a country are we living in? And what kind of transitional plan are we creating? And I'm saying that if the president were a listening president, we would have resumed the collection of tolls now because the, that decision to cancel it, fiasco. Fiasco. The 60 million that we're generating, eh? we're going to generate money from the road tolls. It's clearly telling you that the people are protesting against the e-levy. And you know what's happening with the e-levy now? Now, somebody was telling me yesterday that if you send any amount, the deduction is made. Any amount. The deduction is, somebody told me yesterday that they sent 10 CDs, they were deducted. Another told me they sent 50, they were deducted 100. So what's going on? Because we're told, we're made to understand that all those categories, I mean, up to 100 CDs, we're not going to be affected. So really, who are the poor people? Because we're told that people who can send less than 100 up to 100 are the poorest of the poor. So now if you can send 50 Ghana, 20 Ghana has been deducted. You use your merchant for Momo and it is being deducted. Who are the poor people? And where are the exempted categories? But if the president were listening, president, road tolls would have been reinstated. Yet the president has advices. If our president had been a listening president, we would have by now asked the people who are going around and convincing us that everybody else is at fault, my government is at fault, would have asked them to stay aside. Especially knowing that IMF is in the country, and the more they speak, the more they anger the people, the more they draw responses from the people, and the more din and more noise that will be around the place. And that's why the teachers disagree with you when you tell them there's no money. They insist that you must pay their 20 to 30 percent of cola because they have seen you not living in uh, austere measures. They have seen you living in opulence and, and affluence. They've seen it. These are my four things to the president. Mr. President, if you are a listening president, do this for the people. Win back the confidence that you had prior to the 2016 election, which gave you the sweetest victory ever in the electoral history of this country. Sweetest victory ever. Never recorded before. Never ever. They want a reshuffle. Go on to the, and I say always use your national security people. Go on to the streets. They want a reshuffle. They want you to cut wastage in real time and to demonstrate it and show them where what you are cutting is being used for, and what is being used for, where the monies are being put. They want you to uh, reinstate the collection of road tolls. 
Because if we can make money from there, it will save us from going to collect monies that would have a, a ripple effect, paying collateral and paying uh, interest and paying all those things. Mr. President, the people are watching you. The people are asking you to be a listening president indeed. Because so far, it doesn't appear that you're a listening president. And even the promises that you have made to the people, when the people now call your attention to the promises that you have made to them, the people who are demanding for what you promised them are called now as enemies of the state and enemies of the party, and they are called, they are put in political clothing. That's unfair. So good morning to you, Mr. President. I, I pray that you consider these thoughts. I pray honestly that you consider these thoughts this morning. I'm not fit to advise you. I'm not fit to teach you how to govern. But I insist that so long as I pay my taxes and so long as I am a good citizen of this republic and so long as I remain a citizen of this country, how your governance impacts me will encourage me to speak up and tell you, Mr. President, how you are governing me and other Ghanaians, we don't like it. And so far, most of your ministers have to go. So far, you have to cut down on the spending. So far, Mr. President, you have to bring back the tolling. And so far, we have to get further and better particulars about the e-levy particularly. Who have you exempted? Where are the poorest of the poor? These are my four key points. Now, about a week ago, I told you about something around the Oklum Kwanta area in the Kaswa place. Um, the Kaswa neighborhood where they got it. Danny, you show the picture before and after. There's, there's some work that's ongoing now. I want to quickly show you. It's one of the success stories of Johnny's Bite, and we like to show you what it was before. So this was what it was before at the Oklum Kwanta area. Uh, Danny, you may have to find the, the gentleman crossing this. So two, two areas, Utu Senya East and Utu Senya West, uh, and then Obom constituency. This is uh, a gutter there. I, I think it's a river that... Um, you know, had been, uh, the covert had been removed as a result of the rain. The covert had been removed uh, completely, and uh, the people couldn't, couldn't cross. But as it stands now, uh, some work has been done around the area. Ketsi, the advocacy that we put out here on Johnny's bike. Now, uh, Danny, look for the video of the gentleman crossing, stepping into the water because he couldn't, um, you know, uh, find um, some, some bridge to cross, Okay. So let's find that one quickly. There's a gentleman there, and, and I saw a soldier there that day. He had to park his motorbike and walk through the water. Of course, he's a soldier. He's trained to maneuver. But there was another civilian who used the bamboo sticks that I want to show you. Okay, so that's him there. Take a look at him. He had to go all the way down. The man pointing, pointing to that direction, that's his home. His home is there, but it's been cut away. So his option was to use the Obom Road, which is also to the market road, which is also, we are told, uh, I, I know, has some issues uh, here and there. But that's him. He's a citizen of the Republic, pays his, um, what do you call it, his taxes. He was told to be a citizen, not a spectator. And this was how he was crossing uh, to his home. Imagine if you do not have balance like Andani and you want to cross uh, on these bamboo uh, branches uh, or stalk. How, how are you going to do that? Okay, so that's him. This is what he did. And this was about uh, a little over a week ago. We showed you this. We're crossing over to that, that place on our usual weekend recce, and then we saw this happen. Danny, so that, that's the situation there. Play for me the, the work that's being done. And we called out Honorable Howard Comsey, Honorable Gisela Tete, um, who are MPs for Ewutu Senior East and Ewutu Senior West in that area. I just had to show you the success story. Danny, play the video for me. How work is progressing in that place now. Uh, Ketsi Johnny's Bite. It's progressing steadily. And we hope that by the next um, rainy um, cycle, we will not have people walking through that um, position uh, before. Yeah. So th these, uh, this was sent by... Um, Chairman, Chairman Zoom Lion, yeah? Chairman Zoom Lion, he sent it to me. He lives around the place. Chairman Zoom Lion sent this one to us. And after he alerted us that work has actually uh, begun. So Chairman Zoom Lion, thank you very much for the images that you sent out there. So that's the progress work so far. What we showed you before and after. That's the benefit of Johnny's Bite. And, and, and just to reiterate that we don't do Johnny's Bite because we hate anybody. We do Johnny's Bite because we think that authorities sometimes cannot do it all. 
we must point authorities towards where the concerns of the people are and where the problems and challenges of the people are. And then, once we finish that, we can all live happily ever after as citizens of the Republic of Ghana. And that is my job. That is why I wake up every morning at dawn to come here to come and raise critical national issues. You can love us, you can hate us, but we are getting results. And we will not stop until we get results for the people who do not have voices. Because if I had not gone through that Oklum Kwanta area, to have seen that for more than three weeks after the first rain came, I think about four weeks after the first rain came, they had, they had no, no access to their homes. And they had to burn more fuel, more transportation to go through all that stress, bodily pains in that Gonkejo road. Nobody would have spoken for them. I was told that their MPs had come to the place, but the work would not have progressed this speedily if we had not added that voice. So we will continue to add our voices to the stress of the people. You can hate us, you can like us. God is enough for us. Good morning.